Let's go. Hey, Sina. Hi. Hey, what's up? How are you? What's up? How are you? How are you? We had a very long um, Farsi room, but uh, let's 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 keep the ball rolling. Let's do the English session. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, obviously, there is this uh, Luna implosion that we want to talk about today, and um, also the current macro environment. I would like to talk to you about that a little bit before we go to the Luna situation and the UST situation. And maybe from there, we take some questions and close it up. So how have you been? Everything fine? Oh, good. So pretty much looks like uh, lots of the discussion we've been having. Uh, um, oh, wait, sorry. Wait, 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 sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sometimes uh, people in Clubhouse, I need to switch here. I forgot that. Okay, um, now people can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, we've been talking about the, the potential for a market crash since God knows when uh, because of the macro environment. <clears throat> we see that playing out. I think last time we spoke, we were talking about increased volatility, increased likelihood of unexpected events. And uh, we see that we also said, the, you know, even though at that point market had still had, had fallen, we said there's more room to go uh, because we really need to get to that capitulation phase before we have any chance of changing the trend. Uh, we also see that happening. We really, you know, this, this big flash crash to, to levels that were previously thought unlikely. Um, was uh, was a you know a cleaning phase. Lots of leverage. A lot of people who would rely on a line on a, on a chart to save their life savings uh, probably got a, a had a rude awakening. And uh, uh, this has a good shot at being the bottom or kind of close to bottom, right? So even though I don't expect these huge moves to subside anytime soon, like this. Uh, massive, uh, not not really massive, but significant uh, recovery of price we've seen from, from 25. Um, these things generally don't uh, reverse that fast. So uh, I still expect lots of volatility, especially because nothing had changed in the macro environment. You know, NASDAQ is, for example, rebounding, and there's a really strong case to make that this is uh, just uh, the result of oversold conditions. Uh, Macro getting worse every day, um, but the positive side is it doesn't have much more room to go before the whole credit market collapses. Yeah, let me let me ask you something about that because uh, I would like to share the screen with you so you can see my screen. Obviously, people on Clubhouse won't be able to see that, but um, this is something very very interesting. I want to know your um opinion about it so um the 30 year government us government bond has uh obviously let me just share the screen with you there we are can you see it okay yes so so, so the 30 year has all of a sudden spiked today uh tremendously it's like uh, almost 13% spike to the upside um, actually do you want to yes um uh, do you want to like align this picture a little bit better so I can send a screenshot to our Telegram group? Um, I would be able to pin it as well. If someone wants to just follow the images. Yeah, I, I will take care of that. I will, I, maybe you can start talking about it. I will, I will pin it to, uh, to, to the room. Okay, so we have a channel where we post BitGuide information. We have a t chat group which is a place where you can ask any kind of questions, noob or advanced, doesn't matter. It's just a chat room for Bitcoiners. And uh, you can also follow, follow some, of the, some of the information here. So I'm gonna just, just grab the screen and- uh, or I maybe just send, 
I you just sent to it to you. Thing. No, I just sent it to you over Telegram as well. If you want, you can grab it from there, but you can do a screenshot yourself. No worries. I, I just sent it to you. You got, got it. it. So I'll okay. send it directly to the channel. Um, it's just called BitGuide. So if you want to search on Telegram, it's going to be BitGuide underline IO. Uh, I guess we will get the link soon as well on, on the Clubhouse pin. Yeah, so basically what's happening is, uh, as you said, you know, yields coming down, bond prices jumping. Did you say, yeah, 20, 12, almost 13%. Mm -hmm. um, uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I look at the longer term trend that we started from December, and that's a reduction, rapid reduction in price of bonds and, uh, and, and drop uh, increase in the yields, right? So um, let's first talk about that longer trend, and then we will see this, this yes. immediate reaction, to what's going on. So basically, uh, let me explain why bond, bonds are doing what they're doing. Um, you have to realize that in the fiat world, we've got, obviously, we've gotten rid of uh, any physical or, or hard money as, as, as the backing. Uh, but you know, institutions needed something. So they have moved gradually to the US treasury as a store of value. Uh, it, it provides yield, so obviously better than just cash. So a lot of the a lot of institutions, a lot of central banks, a lot of financial players, they use these treasuries as collateral for uh, loans and uh, debt. Um, there is huge amount of debt in the world, something like 250 trillions of dollars of debt, and a lot of it is backed by U.S. treasuries. Okay, so once we understand this situation, we'll see that treasury market is actually super, super important for the stability of the financial markets. Um, when you have a collapse in credit for reasons such as the psychological effect of Federal Reserve trying to pull out all the liquidity and sometimes just sheer amount of uh, risk and debt that's built in the system and not, not accompanied by GDP growth. Um, maybe black swan events like COVID or other things. Um, all of these can actually lead to this uh, spiral, death spiral in credit. So you are indebted and suddenly banks get more conservative. There is little credit available, little liquidity available. So uh, they will First of all, they will reprice your collateral. More volatility means you, you're going to post more collateral. You, you want to post more collateral means you have to sell some of it because you are already in the negative territory. You already have lots of debt. So uh, how can you come up with some hard, uh, hard money? You have to sell some of the treasuries you're holding and buy U.S. dollar with it. Okay, Especially we we expect this trend to to demonstrate to you know to experience uh, huge moves when we have a wave of bankruptcies or financial stress okay and and that's what we are risking right now we are extremely indebted and we are pulling out credit and liquidity we are running the risk of a financial uh, sudden stop such that you know uh, debt cannot be repaid and volatility spikes, credit collapses, right? All of that to track it, one of the nicest way to track that is looking at bond prices and bond yields. Uh, so if you have a lot of people try having problem with collateral, you will see a lot of US treasury selling and a lot of US dollar buying, right? So if you also look at the chart of D DXY, Dixie, uh, or any kind of other U.S. dollar pair with Japanese yen, Chinese yuan, can uh, you euro. just can you just briefly explain the Dixie? What is it? Or Dixie maybe I can a... maybe I can do it. It's it, so basically the dollar index or Dixie is basically a basket of the world's most important currencies against the dollar. And if the Dixie goes up, that means the U.S. dollar versus these all other currencies, which is specifically the Euro, which has the most weight in this uh, basket, the Japanese yen, the Canadian dollar, 
and uh, the Chinese one, I think, is also in it, the British pound, and so on and so forth. So if the Dixie goes up, that means the dollar is strengthening. And if the Dixie goes down, that means the dollar is weakening versus these currencies. Okay. Now, if you're experiencing a global financial stress, what do we expect dollar to do? What do we expect Dixie to do? Well, it's rising, right? Because there's more dollars demanded and other currencies are uh, falling against it right now. Exactly. So, you know, you have, you have trouble with your debt, but you have treasury as your reserve. Uh, well, if you want to pay back that dollar denominated debt, you have to buy dollars and sell treasuries. So we expect the yields to, so pro bond prices go down, yields go up, and dollar go up, right? And we've seen that over the last uh, few months. And it's important to remember, this is a gradually then suddenly situation, right? If dollar goes up, suddenly lots of countries around the world, especially weaker economies, now have trouble paying back their debt. So you may see one by one showing signs of stress, like Italy having, having lots of problems, South Korea, uh, any number of these weak, indebted economies. Uh, and, and if dollar goes up uh, to a really high level, then you start getting default and some other um, um, bankruptcies and all, right? And when that happens, the contraction of credit gets even more uh, severe. The, flock, the, 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 the run to the dollar becomes more severe, sell-off of treasuries become more severe. So following these indicators are really good ways of kind of gauging where we are in that financial collapse. Uh, but the recent trend change, like 13% is really big. So that's something that, you know, it, it can be a, just a rally, like temporary rally from sold off levels. Or uh, it can be because financial markets are now kind of readjusting and rethinking, saying, okay, it looks like we are really at, we have really pushed this thing too far. We are really close to the place where Federal Reserve will come back and change policy. Um, and that's exactly what I expect to like within, I don't know, three or six months, we should see um, some of these markets starting to show signs of uh, uh, breaking and Federal Reserve having to stop quantitative uh, tightening and that's that's yes. that's significantly sooner than what the markets currently price in other markets so um i would be following this a lot uh, especially i will look at it if uh if in the coming months or maybe coming weeks this actually uh, the increase in bond prices re reverses goes back to the previous level we are in a very very bad shape and very close to that um, final final stage. It's important to note that uh, when you when you follow the the, the yields, like thirty year yields hit three point four percent in twenty eighteen. That was when you know Federal Reserve had started tightening, yes. and yes. markets uh, basically sold off and sold off and sold off and credit contracted and contracted. All that dollar liquidity, euro dollar shortage occurred. And that caused uh, significant credit risk. And that's something that the Federal Reserve cannot ignore. They can let the stock market plummet to some extent because then with, with a lag, stock reduction also leads to demand destruction. Um, so, but, but, so, but, so, so, so just, 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 just to briefly go back to that point. So the problem right now, why the dollar, because I think a lot of people uh, don't understand why the dollar would go up if, uh, if there is an economic recession, the dollar should go down, right? It's a little bit confusing for people. So I want to clarify that. The reason is because there is so much debt in the system and because the debt is denominated in the US dollar and all of a sudden, the central bank that issues those dollars comes in and says, we are going to increase the rate at which you can lend these dollars, right? So they might make it more expensive to print more dollars, right? 
you have a contraction instead of an expansion of the money supply. And because there is so much debt obligations, that contraction causes markets to liquidate downwards because investors uh, fear that, not actually investors fear, but because the debt obligations have to be repaid back and most investors liquidate their most liquid assets. They sell their assets for dollars, not because they love dollars, but because they have debt obligations and they, they cannot borrow very cheaply anymore. So they start to sell assets versus the dollar in order to pay back all the debt, right? That's why you have the dollar going up versus assets, other currencies, and so on and so forth. And the economy is therefore suffering. Yeah, I mean, if you if you go back to a few weeks ago when everybody was like, you know, this uh, Russia's uh, attempt to accept uh, to force rubles against dollars and gold, this is all going to crash the dollar. And you and I were very clear that, you know, the way the system works, this is not going to happen anytime soon. We saw a lot of people kind of prematurely call for the death of the dollar. That's been that's not a new story. Uh, I noticed that it's been a century that people are <laughs> calling for death of the dollar. Uh, in fact, as we get more problems in the world, more currencies will collapse and there would be more uh, of them that will trans, uh, uh, you know, switch to dollar. Yes. Um, so if you kind of think a little bit deeply about how the system works, it's not like, you know, in a country, whether it be China or Russia or anyone, they can turn a switch and suddenly announce that, oops, from tomorrow, I'm not going to work with dollars. That's not how it works. Uh, but that's beside our point today. Yes, exactly. So uh, let's talk about uh, what we actually want to talk, wanted to talk about in this room. So basically, this uh, macro environment obviously caused prices to come down for the reasons we just talked about. And uh, with it, the Bitcoin price versus the dollar came down. And uh, it caused a cascading event where a project called UST and Luna collapsed. Maybe we talk about that now a little bit more in detail. Let's start with the UST and then move forward to Luna. What is the UST and what role does the Luna altcoin play or plate in it because it's now down to zero? And what does that, what has all of that to do with the Bitcoin, um, with Bitcoin? Yeah, so maybe we can start by uh, talking about the idea of stable coins. You know, it's obvious that you know, Bitcoin being a new asset, kind of a child, you can think of it, um, in the financial world. Um, and, and because of that, it's very volatile, right? So if we reach a point where a substantial portion of the global commerce is done with Bitcoin and we have certain uh, debt, uh, a lot of debt denominated in it, or it's a unit of account, then volatility will go away. But at the moment, the, the volatility between dollar and uh, Bitcoin causes trouble in trading using bitcoin right because a lot of people will be surprised you know yesterday i had this much tomorrow i have this much this kind of hampers trade right um because of that some people came up and created this idea of stable coins which of course had um you know uh, was anything but stable because uh, they are generally a project that someone created because of the lack of trustworthy uh, uh, alternatives, extremely centralized and carrying with it a lot of risks and a lot of opacity and vagueness in what's behind it, right? So a lot of the smart Bitcoin maxis would quickly jump at these and say, okay, stablecoin, what the hell do you mean? How do you, how do you keep the peg? Um, how do you make sure? So the idea of a stablecoin is just, you know, making sure that the price of a coin always is uh, equals one dollars, right? Which, 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 which actually means the peg. So when we say uh, it's pegged, it means it is one to one to the dollar. If it's pegged to the dollar, just right. for the listeners. So, so, so yeah. um, uh, you know, smart people always asked how exactly. I'm not going to just try trust your website. How exactly do you keep that pick? 
And the real way to keep a peg is to, to make sure you have, like, for example, if you've issued a thousand coins, you have to have a thousand dollars in your reserve somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can guarantee a real one-to-one -one backing. And without really expanding the money supply, you know, you, you store some value and then you promise the same, same value to people, right? In that case, if everyone who bought those uh, coins want their dollars back, you can immediately do it with no problem. Um, but the problem is there's no money. There, there's nothing you can steal that way, right? Um, there's no scam in that, right? But so, so people try to be more creative and say, all right, I'll just buy $20 and promise $1,000. And as long as in, in any, at any moment in time, um, no more than 20 people on the net want to, want to extract or receive their dollars back, I'm fine, okay? And that's the idea of only making sure the peg, at the peg you have liquidity. Similar, not... similar, similar to fractional reserve banking, right? That's a similar idea. Exactly. Or same a, idea. Lot of, a lot of crypto folks just copy the scams that are in the fiat world and just call it digital new, new, new technology, new world, new finance, decentralized. None of that's of course true. It's exactly the copy of everything we have problems with in the fiat world and even you know come up with new scams please you know just taking you know just copying all the previous ponzi models and and fractional reserve models uh and and call it uh, crypto isn't gonna cut it you know at least a lot of people would see through it so um yeah, so I, I think, that, you know, the shenanigan you can play here is to not have sufficient backing, okay? But if you tell people, all right, I only have $20 backing $1,000 of coins, well, of course, people are not going to like it, right? So, uh, and then you, you're going to say, I'm fully backed. So one way to do that is kind of lie and say, I'm fully backed or, or kind of be opaque on that. So that's one, one way. Uh, Tether, for example, has been very, very opaque about how much they actually have. More recently, they've published reports that physical cash is down to two, three percent, and they have other things in it. But the physical cash, the actual hard cash, is two to three percent. Uh, if you want to look it up, Google Financial Times and Tether um, Tether backing. There's a commentary on that. Let's see if I actually have that, the title, yes. Title is Tether says its reserves are backed by cash to the tune of 2.9% by Jemima Kelly, right? It's uh, May 14, 21, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's also probably a, a, a more recent one, sorry. But anyways, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of opacity here and, uh, for a long time, people have been trying to find out how, what exactly is your, uh, what exactly is your backing, right? Uh, let me see if I can find a newer uh, report. But anyways, I don't have time now. But um, so that's one way. The other way to do that is to kind of create a complex scheme, which we call algorithmic stable coins, that hides the fact that you don't have enough reserves. So you create this situation where you know, I have a different ecosystem on the side. So I have a stable coin, which doesn't have enough reserves, right? And obviously what can happen is like a lot of people trying to get dollars, uh, and it's, I mean, sell their, sell their coin, get dollars back. And if you don't have enough, the effect of that is uh, you're not going to be able to satisfy all these people. So the, the price of the coin would gradually fall below $1 and the peg is lost. And of course, that also causes a death spiral because more people would try to realize that this is happening. And specifically, uh, but specifically, um, uh, Sina, in this case of Luna, can you specifically say how they did it? Because they had this altcoin, uh, Luna, that they sold. And through that, um, they said that they are pegging. Basically, the idea, as far as I understood it, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that there is this altcoin called Luna. And uh, if the Luna um, 
if if uh, sorry if the UST the stable coin is basically uh, going below one dollar, they would um, buy more Luna, right? Or sorry, they would they would um, they would um, print more uh, pr print less Luna, so contraction, right? Um, or burn existing Luna. And if the dollar peg goes higher than one dollar, they would uh, print more Luna. As long as there is more Luna suckers, people who pay dollars for Luna, uh, which is a different cryptocurrency outside of that, uh, that scheme would work. Is that a correct assumption, the way I understand it? Right. So. Uh, going back to the pro problem starts when a lot of people are trying to sell UST and buy dollars, right? Somehow yes, or yes. kind of sell it for something else. And remember, you don't have sufficient reserve. So you start not being able to honor those uh, conversions and the price of the coin drops below one. In that case, an algorithm stable coin, the idea is they're going to do some kind of game somewhere else where they come up with some money and that money creates liquidity to honor the peg and um, return dollars to the people who want it right mm -hmm. so how do you come up with that new money that's the idea in in the luna's eco ecosystem terra ecosystem the idea is we will just print more luna okay of course we press a button and we create lots of money for ourselves of course there's nothing wrong and nothing that can go wrong with that and then we get all that money and uh, fix the problem with the pack. Now, if the reverse happens uh, and, and the price of the coin goes above $1. Mm -hmm. um, the UST uh, stable coin. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so, so a lot of people want UST. Then in that case, we will burn. Uh, we will sell UST that we hold in our reserves and then we will uh, burn some um uh luna mm -hmm. uh, so this in theory this should work as long as your printer works and you you have a lot of demand for luna if you go back a few weeks ago it was at all-time high something like 120 dollars or so super super uh successful up to that point um, so when that's the case, your printer works and it, anytime you need more liquidity for your UST you can print the money. Okay. Now, what causes Luna to be so you can see, you know, UST gets its value from the algorithmic change between Luna and UST. Okay. But what gives Luna value? The fact that you can stake it at this third ecosystem called Anchor and get 20% yield. Okay. Um, that creates now, that 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 creates artificial demand for Luna, right? Exactly. So, artificial so, so, demand so, for Luna. So so like a Ponzi scheme, actually. It's actually a Ponzi scheme. Exactly. So like three weeks ago, if you were a maximalist who said this is a Ponzi scheme, don't do it. People will say, "Are you idiot? Are you an idiot? Are you crazy? You're gonna leave twenty percent." yield on the table and not only that the price of the coin is also going up win-win everybody's happy the system works no problem just shut up uh boring maxi and let me get rich um but of course you got to ask yourself where does that 20 percent comes from did we create value in the world did we create useful goods and services are we a bank that analyzes investment options loans to entrepreneurs and those entrepreneurs, you know, after one or two years later, they come back, return the money with, profit, with, with interest and we make real profit because we caused something good in the world. Did we do that? Is 20% coming from that? Obviously no, because, you know, running success, running a successful business is, uh, is, is, is the hard. Running a scam is very easy. So we will simply promise 20% and a lot of people would come in the, the seniorage we get from newcomers will allow us to pay 20% to the old comers. And uh, this continues. As long as new people come in, I can take their money and pay back old guys. So 20% works, Luna high demand, UST working. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens? So far, so good. So far, so everything far, so works. Good. Yeah. 
what happens is for whatever reason, new people don't show up in the staking program. So your 20% starts to show signs of stress. You can't probably pay that much, or you can pretend you pay that and just print Luna at the crazy level to make up for the cash. So Luna price starts not going up as much and actually starting signs of decline. Now it's at the margin, some people will kind of get sense the risk and try to get out exactly like we when we were talking about Luna's Ponzi scam uh, in our Farsi rooms, a couple of people later told me at that point we got out. Thank you very much for informing us. Um, so, so at the margin, a few people who are kind of more sensitive to risk, whatever they get out, and that kind of adds to the problem and causes um, even more decline in price. And that stops the flock of new people coming in, and that stops their ability to pay back. As Luna's price goes down, um, also confidence in UST goes down. So a lot of people are like, okay, whoa, 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 this is too, too uh, you know, fishy. Let me just uh, sell my UST and uh, move to something else for now. So, 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 people... so as soon as so as soon as the Bitcoin price came down, the Luna uh, the Luna price came down with it. Um, sorry, just one second. Uh, as soon as the Luna price, sorry, the Bitcoin price came down. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So uh, as soon as the Bitcoin price came down, it basically took down the. Uh, Luna price with it and with the Luna price coming down the people uh, who were invested in Luna lost confidence and um, basically wanted to move out of UST right they they started yes, because everyone stress. knows you know that's backing that so if that's kind of yes showing a stress now this could have all worked if we didn't have this macro decline one second but... sorry one, one second one second one second, my phone got disconnected, so I need to do. Okay, we're back. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I mean, if we didn't have, if you probably didn't have this sell-off in 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 all the markets right now, probably they could have gone further. But always, you know, that some external push stops the entrance of new suckers into the system, and then old suckers have to suck more. <laughs> so um and uh and then they get out and more people get out and more people get out so so confidence breaks down like a house of cards and then obviously no amount of money can save that system if people have lost confidence and uh, and so uh that's the story and basically let's take a quick look at the price uh and see what happened to this luna coin that was uh, making people rich interestingly raul Powell was advocating for it and i saw a tweet someone a few weeks ago said you know just getting to know raul i that he has opened my eyes to luna and i've moved in a lot of my money and then the next tweet a few days ago was that i've lost 100 percent of my investment in crypto so wow. um wow so whoever really, is following yeah, really, really Raul Powell, don't 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 follow Raul Powell or his company Real Vision. They've been misleading investors to all sorts of altcoins, and um, yeah. So maybe okay. Maybe, Luna uh, price, Luna price, zero point zero 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 one two, and like two hours ago it was a lot lower. It's been kind of changing. Who knows? Maybe another. So, 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 Sina, it went literally from a hundred and something dollars, literally a hundred percent down to zero. This is a record, right? We've never, we've never had anything like this before. This is a, this is a record. No, no shitcoin has ever done that. Yeah. I mean, going to zero is extremely hard. I mean, XRP was being, uh, prosecuted left and right, all kinds of um, negative news, you know, imminent collapse. It's a lot of these shit coins don't go to zero. It's really hard because there's always that small amount of 
you know, demand sitting somewhere for whatever reason, like Dogecoin, but for what, example, what, what, but what out. had, but, but, but Sina, let, let's, let's, let's go to the, to the, to the, to the most important part, which most people are more curious about what had all of this scam to do with Bitcoin? Because he started to claim that all of this is now backed by Bitcoin, right? Uh, which is something I don't understand because there was this Luna coin. Uh, why would he then start to buy Bitcoin with, with, with uh, Luna um, revenues? Because that's what he did, right? Yeah. So remember, going back to what we discussed, uh, this is a confidence game. So you have to create this uh, era, aura of, uh, strength and stability, even though you don't have it, right? So you have to basically fool people to believe that your system is stable so that you can attract more people coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if that confidence breaks, everything's gone. Now, I want to go back to, um, let's see if I can find it on the charts. Uh, earlier this year, uh, yes. So if you go to March uh, 7th, 2022 you see the peg dropped a little bit so to, to 99 cents mm -hmm. and then it recovered so they were ex experiencing the first uh serious issues and then another time in february is much smaller but that as well as they as they experienced these troubles they thought okay what can we do to recover the uh confidence Mm -hmm. Of course, you can, uh, you know, being a very smart scammer, they knew that, you know, an affinity game with Bitcoin would help. So they would, they said, all right, we will create a Bitcoin reserve and we will print a ton of Luna uh, and buy lots of uh, Bitcoin. And that will basically prove to anyone that we are this blue chip uh stable coin that is backed by the best it's backed asset by world. bitcoin this exactly. backed by bitcoin is just one of those biggest fallacies uh, you have to again ask where how much do you have enough bitcoin uh to to honor that peg i think even even at uh, not even counting the volatility in bitcoin's price they were the amount of bitcoin they were planning to buy was not still uh, a, a substantial amount compared to the market cap Mm -hmm. Right. So it didn't actually solve the problem. It just converted uh, some of the reserves into Bitcoin to just uh, call it uh, Bitcoin backed. Right. And, and that solves the confidence. Uh, if you also imagine a lot of Bitcoin people kind of got duped as well, and they assume this is a wonderful thing that's happening and they didn't pay enough attention to the Ponzi that's behind it. <clears throat> and we actually did have some smart people in the ecosystem that talked about the community that talked about, you know, these things will unwind sometime, right? Um, so the part, so, so Bitcoin is basically the fourth component. They have the USD, they have Luna, they have Anchor staking, and then they created this fourth thing, Bitcoin Reserve, which is supposed to help them, you know, if, if the peg drops, they would be able to sell the Bitcoin and honor the peg. Yes. But um, of course, if you bought sufficient Bitcoin, again, there would be no money in this, right? So, so it had to be as much as a fraction of what they need. And, uh, uh, and, then, and then at this point, they could have done, basically they could have sold their Bitcoin to pay people back. But I can imagine if there's a lot of uh, sell-off, not even, it will quickly run out and you still can't keep the peg and the whole system breaks and you will lose all the Bitcoin and everything else, right? So I think because these are scammers, smart scammers, I would guess they haven't sold out of the Bitcoin, just a guess. Uh, there's no uh, proof yeah, of anything. Right? There is no proof that they sold any of their Bitcoin, is there? Right, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, if you are, this, this is clearly a scam, right? So no scammer tries to save the scam when they know it's, it's falling apart. So. Would be really interesting. Maybe a few months later, we will figure out what happened. Mm. Um, but importantly, you know, you have to live. You have to verify yourself. Live your life based on your own analysis, right? And Bitcoin maxes all the time are proven right, time and time again. 
when they talk about risks and potential issues, and the challenge with risk is our brains are wired in a way that we kind of underestimate risk and we underappreciate it because risk by definition has not happened. It's a it's an abstract concept. It does it, it doesn't happen until it does, right? So the majority of the time you are happy, you are that uh, you're a lamb um, that's having a good time, but one day is the slaughter day, right? Um, and, and a lot of people kind of miss that. They look at the recent growth. They look at you know recent uh, explosion in the price of the coin. It's going to 120. Uh, never been better, uh, and it will continue doing that. Um, yeah. earning 20% as well. Perfect. I mean, um, these are these are the kind of events that make new Bitcoin maximalists come into existence, right? Because a lot of people have this impression that Bitcoin maximalism is something that comes into existence out of uh, some sort of closed mindedness, which is absolute nonsense. Uh, so here's the example of how new Bitcoin maximalists come into existence through pain, experience, and knowledge. That's what happened in 2017. Everyone who suffered from massive losses through the ICO boom became a Bitcoin maximalist because they realized the only thing that counts here is Bitcoin. Nothing else stays around, nothing else. So this is another example. And as you can see, all the altcoins have started to dive uh, uh, even further than Bitcoin and they're all falling against Bitcoin. So I think the, the big difference, the there's biggest, a big difference, yeah, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin biggest, does drop because of course, you know, we have, we have lots of weak hands. Um, that's fine. You, you think there's a macro problem, you don't, you want cash, it's fine, sell it, sell it to me. The difference is we are confident that this is going to come back if it has a strong and actually real fundamentals. And you can sleep tight knowing that whatever happens goes down to a thousand dollars, goes up to a hundred dollars, it's going to come back and it's going to meet new all time highs. It's just a matter of time. Uh, it's working as intended, nothing has changed. But for everything else, it's been growing because of Bitcoin, right? Yes. Not because of something they offer internally, not because of value they create in the world. It's just an illusion of high, high technology and, you know, all kinds buzzwords. of things that amounts to and nothing. And buzzwords yeah. and buzzwords. So, so the biggest takeaway from this destruction uh, for anyone who is listening is drop your altcoins and convert them into Bitcoin. Okay, if you still don't understand why, this is, an, this is the example why. You do not want to trust anyone. That's the entire purpose of uh, cryptocurrency, okay, of Bitcoin, is that you do not want to trust anyone. I was tweeting the other day after this happened is, I was like, what, make, what in the world makes you believe that if you cannot trust the central bank who issues the dollar, that you can trust some random Chinese guy to uh, not abuse the money printer. What makes you believe that? Or any other project, because every single project, no matter which one, Ethereum, um, Cardano, all these coins, I'm not talking about the technologies. I'm not talking about ideas. This is not about that. This is all about the native currency attached to them. If there is a native currency attached to these ecosystems, you have to ask yourself, who controls that? How many of those coins exist? How easy is it to change the monetary policy or the number of units of that currency and who controls that that's the question you need to ask yourself and as soon as you realize that all of them are highly centralized or way more cent i mean there 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 is a spectrum in in decentralization and centralization right but all of them are 
very much under influence of their leaders and they can be manipulated if if the leaders decide to and obviously as we have learned from the fiat world at the end of the day human greed is um just too high the temptation if you can print your currency that you print more of it for yourself and your buddies is just too high so that's the reason we come into crypto right that's the reason why and the only thing that no one controls is bitcoin when it comes to monetary policy and so on and so forth if you want to build something new a technology an application whatever you can do it right now on top of bitcoin on lightning for example you do not need another native token there is no necessity and if you want to raise money you need to establish a company and within the establishment of the company you issue a stock that's called a security and for that you need to make the de declarations that way the investor is protected so you cannot cheat on the investor and of all of a sudden print more stock right the investor is informed what you are doing that's why there is securities laws but all of these projects are actually illegal because they're securities they're companies but they 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 sell themselves as a decentralized protocol that is going is going to grow higher than bitcoin right so i think after this luna case it it should become clear what bitcoin is about this space is not about applications use cases utilities all of that already can exist um if companies exist utilities can be built there is nothing wrong with that right there is value in 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 new technologies this space however a blockchain is only its only purpose is not to trust anyone and as soon as you don't want to trust anyone you create of course a lot of inefficient inefficiencies and if you want fast and speed uh, speedy technology a blockchain is not suitable for that right so if you want to build something in the space it should be only on top of bitcoin there is no need for any native currency outside of bitcoin anything outside of bitcoin is a scam therefore by definition even if like I, when i say that sina sometimes i hear people say yes but rk there is people i have met them face to face they are genuine they're building they're really hard working people they really want to build the future right and my response to that is look at uh, bernie madoff he ran one of the biggest ponzi schemes in the world worth billions and all of his employees thought they're doing a really good job working for a very highly reputable company all of them none of them knew that this is a ponzi scheme right so you can have hard working people working on a project but the founders behind the scene control all of this and this is what bitcoiners try to explain when they say bitcoin and nothing else Sorry, so, sorry for the rant. Uh, no, no, all, yeah. all are true. And uh, basically, what I want to say is, you know, there's no scam that tells people, "Hey, I got nothing for you, and you just give me your money." All the scams start with producing some fake value, so you will think you're making money. They will. It's not. Some people argue, "Oh, I've already made money." So what are you talking about? You know. Um, and that's exactly how scams work in crypto and uh, probably everywhere else they they throw some money at you to suck you in they take your money run away and buy bitcoin with it so if you're able to make some money in one of these uh, gambles 
uh, congratulations, but you got to know that it wasn't super smart and you probably also dumped on innocent uh, other dumb people. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, long term, there's only there's only one investable asset in this whole space. Um, so, uh, you know, in days like this, this is clear. But as soon as the bull market uh, starts, you know, good and bad get kind of lumped into this whole uh, this whole crypto space and everything's going up and uh, and uh, and people to stop listening. But I hope seeing these and especially paying attention to who did not spot the Ponzi scheme in, in USC. There are lots of influencers who cheered for this guy and this whole thing, and they couldn't think about the problems. And uh, I can, I, I recall several really high, high, um, you know, large accounts. And then think about also the people who asked the right questions about this, and they are probably the ones you want to listen to moving forward. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, Sina, thank you so much for your time. We had a really, really long Persian session and, um, now the English session. I want to, um, uh, just say that we are finally live with our website. Check it out. I pinned it, uh, in the room. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching us on YouTube, just go to bitguide.io. This is our website. We provide Bitcoin education. That's all we do. And if you want to learn about our courses, just sign up on the website. And uh, the first course has already been published. We're working on future courses. And um, yeah, yeah follow the club on clubhouse give us a review wherever you're listening to us uh and um that's pretty much it and we're of course also to be found on twitter give us a follow on twitter at bitguide underscore io is that right is that the twitter handle right bitguide underscore io yes yes and uh i want to thank Sina, for all this research he does every week. I know you're busy, but I want to thank you really. Every week you come with so much um, time invested research done into new topics. And um, I increase my knowledge through the conversations we have. And hopefully others learn the lessons that um, uh, we try to give them and uh, don't burn their hands touching any shit coin. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to remind the audience that uh, Bitcoiners are not dumb. They understand that they can make money if they are not Bitcoin only people, right? So there's a lot of demand out there for talking about shit coins. And another signal you want to pay attention to is, the, is you know, people intentionally shying away from what they, they think is not going to work. And, uh, uh, I personally would trust that that opinion a lot more than somebody who's invested in in this whole um, casino, and uh, you know they had their their paycheck comes from shilling these things, including uh, people like Raul Powell and a few other ones. So uh, well, that's a really good sign to see like whoever is kind of intentionally refuting. Um, you know, opportunities that are morally problematic um, to, to select who you listen to. I, I want to mention like one of the main reasons we created Big Guide was to produce information that's filtered, that's useful, that, that's void of noise. And just to give you an example, if you want to study about uh, stable coins, what would you find? Let's go on Gemini's web website. They've published something called What Are Stable Coins? So you're supposed to get educated reading this. And this is published May 10th, 2022. Pretty like three days ago. Updated, of course. Maybe they've changed something in it. Maybe they were shilling some kind of thing, uh, something that they didn't want you to know, but they've updated it three days ago. Okay, so it goes through uh, different classifications, different uh, mechanisms, these things work. And at the end, 
um, they, they write, as their name suggests, stable coins are inherently stable assets, inherently stable assets, making them a suitable store of value, which encourages their use in everyday transaction, uh, and so on and um, on and on. Uh, no mention of risk, no mention of importance of checking the uh, backing. Uh, and of course, even though they've updated it, no mention of the huge failures in this space that we already have. Uh, that's the kind of problem we have in the crypto space. A new person who you know does a Google search, 99% of what they get is bullshit, right? So, and after years of mistakes and probably months of uh, wasted time, you may finally find who you want to listen to, which sources are credible, which sources are not. All we try to do in BitGuide is kind of look at a topic and, and research and condense the, the good portion of information into a small, uh, a small piece that you can take. We've already created this money course. You can take a look. Uh, same idea. I mean, uh, we have read books and articles and lots of items all summarized and condensed in one, uh, one hour of video. So we will continue doing that. We will appreciate your support as well. If you, if you want to, um, you know, tag us or uh, share your feedback with us or uh, like and retweet and um, subscribe to our content, we would really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's it. That's it. Sina, <clears throat> thank you so, so much. I wish you a beautiful weekend. Thanks for everyone uh, who uh, participated in today's session. And I will see you all next week. Take care. See you next week. See ya. Bye-bye.